Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Sharky back with Real Talk Outdoors. I'm in Texas City, North Carolina. I showed you the lake there a while ago and what was going on as far as it being chilly and cold and everything froze up. I'm here with Mr. Watts. He is the caretaker. He's the man you want to come see. He's the man you want to talk to. If you want to know what's going on in this lake and you want to know what's going on fish-wise, bait-wise, this is the man you want to come and see. Mr. Watts, i got a couple of questions for you. I know you've been here quite a while, and I have too. Have you ever saw that lake froze up like that before? Never have. Never seen you froze up like that. I, you know, I, I drove about an hour to get here just to take a look at this. I heard a lot of people talking about it, but there's one thing about it. For the, about the last week or so, uh, with the icy conditions and the snow, the fish nobody's been fishing, so when it does thaw out, the fish ought to buy it, had they? Oh yeah, they should be getting hungry by then, they? Well, there's one thing that I was trying to tell the people about and, and everything, and it's the, the cleanliness of, of this place. You come down here, it's nice and clean, clean shoreline, everything's clean. You ain't got to worry about parking your truck. You park your truck there, nobody's going to break in and steal your stuff. But if they wanted to come to you, uh, Mr. Watts, and, and get some bait, what type of baits do you all have available? Uh, we've got the minnows, we've got crickets, worms. Night crawlers and uh, wax worms, butter worms. We got a little bit of it all here now. We're gonna soon have some eels down here. That's that's good. Eels is something you don't very seldom ever find in a bait shop, and it sounds like you got all your baits covered. If I look around here, I'm looking at all the artificial lures he's got. He's got pretty much anything you want here, as far as artificial lures, your beater spins, corks. Everything you need to have a good day out there on the water, this, this gentleman seems to have it. Now, I got a question. I see some rods standing right here. Are these rods for rent? Is that what that is? No, or? no, that's not a sturdy rod. That's renting rods. Yes, we're going to. Uh, we're going to rent them for a while. We're going to get them out of here and put them in the boat. Okay, well, that's something to look forward to yeah. in the future. Um, can If a person comes here, can you, do you have fishing license for sale, or do they need to bring their own? They need to bring their own. They can get them right down here at Farm South, though. Farm South, right about a mile here in Charleston. That sounds good. And I know you have all your metal buckets, everything there you, you would need to put your bait in and that kind of stuff. Now, if a person was to come here and it's their first time and they wanted to ask you about what's biting and what direction they would need to go in as far as, okay, all right, it's my first time. And I'm not much on going out there and trying to catch a bunch of bass, but I want to catch something. I got my kids with me, and I just want to catch some fish. What would they need to do? Well, just, just check with me here, and I'll, I'll set them on them where they're at out there, and where they're biting, white perch, trapping, and bass, maybe whatever, you know. I'll tell them the best of my knowledge where to go to catch them out there. We've got 144 acres of water out there, and... Uh, and there's a little bit of everything out there. Well, one one thing that I wanted to ask you about, um, I fished here with my, as a kid with my father many, many years ago. I mean, we're talking a lot of years ago. Some people say the dam breaking hurt the lake. Some see people say that the dam breaking helped the lake. In your opinion, what do you think? Well, I think it helped the lake, and uh, they're going to be working on the dam the next couple of weeks here, and uh, we're lowering the water right now a little bit. We'll have it back up in no time, and we're going to drop it a few foot for them to work on the dam, and, and, and to me, it helped the lake, you know. They, and I agree with that 100%. Now, let me ask you one more question. Um, as a kid fishing this lake, and we're, we're probably talking about, I, I'm, I'm up there at age where that we're going back now probably 40 years. I'm going back that far. Uh, I never saw white perch, and now you guys have got a lot of white perch. Is it something that's just come since the lake is, uh, the dam's been redone, or well, what's happened with this? No, we had one guy to uh, uh, bring them and put them in here, and he didn't have to put very many in, they just multiplied as they uh it's overpopulated with them right now, to be honest with you. Now I I don't know this to be a fact and you'd be the man to ask, 
I'm hearing that with the laws on flatfish regulations in North Carolina, you get a certain krill limit of each fish. But I'm understanding, if I'm correct, let me know, that this lake has no krill limit on white perch. Is that correct? You can catch all you want, or is it? How does that work? You're correct about that. You can catch all of them you want. So, Any size of them. Okay, so if a person was, and I, I know being a perch fisherman myself that these fish, they're, they're, if you get some minnows and you get where they are, they're going to bite. Uh, artificial baits are good. They're very aggressive fish. And this would be an easy target species for somebody to come out here and catch them a mess of fish with, it sounds like. You could come out here and you wouldn't have to worry about size, krill limits, and breaking the law. Is that what you feel about it? or? Yes, sir. You're right there, Sharky. They sure can. And about any time they can catch a white perch out there. I got you. I know that a lot of times I have been on Lake Waccamaw and Big Creek. I'd have to break the ice to get out of it and go to the lake and catch fish. So, Mr. Watts, that's what we was kind of, I'm, I'm glad you took some time with us today and answered some questions for us. We really appreciate this. you got one heck of a good operation here, and uh, we're going to send as many people as, as we can your way. When you get here, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you find this gentleman. When you come inside, you, you to pay for your boat ramp fee. You come in here and buy yourself some bait, get you some snacks. He's got a little bit of everything here. He's got cold drinks and beanie weenies and vainas. Anything you need to make your day out of the water a good one. You will need to get your license before you come here, but if you go uptown, like he was saying, Pond South will sell the North Carolina fishing license if you don't have one. At this point in time, they uh, you need to bring your own rod and reels, everything else he has. They're going to, in the future, start renting rods here, but as of the meantime, go ahead and bring them with you. See this gentleman, Mr. Watts, my good friend here at Lake Tabor, North Carolina. For Real Tree Outdoors, I'm Shark. Yeah, we are.